everybody, Andy here, and excited to say that I have with me the new Canon C300 Mark II. Uh, this is the evolution of the Canon C300, which is the uh, one of the most popular cameras out there today. So it's really great to have here. Canon gave us a little sneak peek. Uh, so I thought I would uh, give you a tour of the sort of key differences between the original camera, which many of you have, have used or seen at least, uh, and the new one, and the new uh, Mark II here. Uh, so let's start. Uh, the tour on sort of the outside of the camera and work our way in uh, to see what's what's really going on with this new system. Starting on the outside of the camera, you can see that it's very, very similar to the original 300. In fact, it's just a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, a little bit wider, and a little bit heavier. Uh, not so much that you really notice, but it's definitely changed enough to fit all those new components they put in the system. Also very nice is they've included now as an accessory uh, this little top piece here, uh, very similar to Zakudo's uh, helmet piece that they had. Basically what this does is attach to the cold shoe that's under here and gives you a nice flat surface to attach accessories, including an updated handle that they've included. This handle attaches uh, via screws to this, uh, to this uh, platform here, making it very strong and sturdy. And it has now accessory mounting points on it, quarter 20s and shoes. Uh, just a nice updated handle, uh, and a big improvement in my opinion. Uh, the screen here is basically the same and same with the audio inputs that we're used to. The uh, difference there is that now on the side here, they've included uh, the uh, connectors instead of having it hardwired into the system. Before, uh, these two connectors were essentially just hardwired into the unit. Now you can disconnect them uh, to add longer cables or if one is damaged, etc. This is sort of a nice update that I think is important uh, and I'm glad that they did that. Uh, so again, something small but worthwhile. On the side here, they have added uh, sort of a larger exhaust fan uh, to get the, uh, the heat out of there from the 4K recording or your high-speed recording. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, like I said, but not significantly so. Uh, on the back here, you'll notice that we have a, now a monitor out as well as a record out, so two SDI outputs here as well as a time code, gen lock, HDMI, etc. Uh, but this, the, uh, the monitor out and record out, uh, the record out is going to be used for your raw output or just a clean video signal where monitoring is for mo monitoring on set, etc. Uh, what's great about these is that raw can come out of one while I have a clean coming out of the other, or just having two uh, clean SDI outputs is a good option anyway. So we'll talk about the raw options in a little bit again. Uh, and then finally down here at the bottom, I have another, and it will have a new uh, power input plug. Uh, on a 300, it was a standard little uh, pole plug, but now it's a nice Limo connector, uh, which uh, many of us will really appreciate the solidness of that connection. Uh, but big difference here as well is now that this camera actually is a 16.7 volt or basically a, a 14 volt nominal camera, meaning that you, you can use standard uh, Anton Bauer, IDX uh, battery systems, which is a great thing because I can power the camera and accessories really nice, but that also means that now I can no longer use my old batteries that I had on the 300. So they do have the same kind of looking battery system here, but these are essentially 12 volt or 14 volt batteries. So uh, this is a uh, this is an update, a big one to notice if you're, if you're going from 300 to Mark II, you need new batteries, but being that it's 12 volt system or 12 volt nominal system, uh, that means I can use tons of battery options externally, which is a really good thing instead of that 7 volt that we had before. Uh, back here I have now, instead of uh, 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 CF cards, I have CFast cards. These are two slots just like I had before on the 300. Uh, but CFast uh, gives me more speed, larger file, larger sizes. You can get 128 gigabyte CFast cards here now. You can take 4K or HD content very easily. So two of those card slots. Uh, and then also, on the far side here, Right there, I have an SD card slot, which is a big deal. Uh, the SD card slot allows me to record a sort of proxy video while I'm recording uh, full quality to the uh, CFast cards. This is a really great option. So the camera can record in various formats, which we'll go over in a minute, but also uh, on SD card as well. So uh, those are the key differences outside of that size change. It's very similar. Buttons are placed basically where you expect them to be put. Uh, nice, nice updates, but nothing huge. Again, you can pick this camera up, used to the 300, and start rolling with it uh, right away. Uh, last but not least, we have here uh, a new updated uh, viewfinder. This is a, a, a micro organic LED viewfinder, which is nice and high resolution, very high contrast. So if you do use this viewfinder, it's a nice update as well. Uh, 
Uh, now let's talk about sort of what's going on inside the camera. The updates on the outside, like I said, are fairly limited. What's going on inside makes all the difference, right? So starting with the sensor, uh, the big deal here, the big change is increased dynamic range, right? So the sensor is very similar, but uh, has almost two stops more range than the original 300. Uh, we're using the uh, Canon Log 2 profile and a lower noise floor of the, of the sensor, are actually able to get up to 15 stops. And we tested this out, and we're pretty happy with the results, even on this prototype camera. Uh, we did a couple of testing on a chart. Uh, here's a chart example for you to check out. And you can see we have 15 stops of range, pretty clean. Uh, we also went outside and did some testing, again, with the prototype here. And we really are getting uh, that range. Pretty impressive. Big update for me. Again, that makes you be able to use this camera in a wide variety of shooting scenarios. The new Canon Log 2 profile looks very nice. Uh, again, an awesome update. So that's the sensor. They've changed it enough to get that performance out of it. So uh, very, very cool. Uh, next is the internal recording. A very important feature change here is the fact that the camera can now record internally in 4K. The 300 technically always had a 4K sensor. You just couldn't really do much with it. Uh, now in the Mark II, we can actually record the 4K uh, sensor area on the, on, uh, internally onto those CFAS cards, uh, as well as output it via raw data. Uh, the 4K recording, as I said, uh, goes to CFAS in a, uh, what they call an, a new codec called XFAVC. This is very similar to what, can, what Sony and Panasonic have, the XAVC or AVC intracodex, but it's Canon's own flavor of that, which is new, but uh, I'm sure it'll be supported soon in all the NLEs. Uh, in terms of the actual recording formats here, let's go in the menus, uh, and you can see there's a wide variety. Uh, from 4K, 4096 by 2160 and 10-bit, uh, all the way down to uh, 1080 and 422 10-bit. Uh, also really nice here uh, is that they have included a 444 12-bit recording, which is actually pretty rare uh, out there overall. This is a still that same codec, XFABC, but 444 and 12-bit uh, which is a great option for a lot of shooting scenarios. If you're not really wanting 4K, but you need as much color information as possible, uh, this will give it to you. So 12-bit 444 in camera, pretty nice. Uh, so that's, those are the recording formats there. You also have the ability, as I said before, to enable 4K raw output on the camera. Uh, this is limited to 30 frames a second in, in 4K, uh, but you get that clean, raw image that Canon's known for, and you can record it via this record out to uh, Odyssey 7Q, uh, Codex, uh, Shogun, things like that. So plenty of options. It's the same Canon RAW as we had in the 500, so everything should work on the recorder front off the bat. Um, in terms of uh, recording frame rates, as I said, 4K is limited to 30 frames. But in HD and 2K, I can actually uh, go up to 60 frames in regular HD or 2K mode, or even up to 120 frames what they call the uh, uh, slow and fast crop mode. So it actually crops the sensor slightly to get even higher frame rates above 60, up to 120. You do that in this recording mode menu here. Select it on, and you can choose between uh, slow and fast, which is their, uh, their slow motion, fast motion me mode, or slow and fast crop. Uh, again, that crop mode is going to let you go all the way to 120 in 2K or HD. So it's a nice option. Of course, they have pre-record, frame record interval as well, just like we had in the previous camera. Uh, but that crop mode lets you jump the resolution up, uh, et cetera. Um, you also have the ability, as I said, to record um, the, uh, a, a proxy codec at the same time as the internal codec. So you do that in this menu here. Uh, when you turn it on, it will record on that little SD card in the front. And you can also apply a lookup table to that recording. It's a pretty cool option. So nice update for sure. Another one that I really do like, uh, option that I like as a techie kind of guy, is the fact that you can apply lookup tables in this camera to various outputs. Uh, especially when you're working in uh, Canon Log, Canon Log 2, you're going to want lookup tables on various outputs, possibly different lookup tables on different outputs too. So uh, the, the, the original 300 had a basic lookup table that could only apply to the viewfinder. Now we can route the lookup tables to various places. If we go in the menus here, we can do that on the output menu here. I can go to LUT, and I can choose uh, to turn on my lookup tables, and then choose on the monitor output or HDMI outputs, the record outputs, 
as well as the LCD and EVF, different lookup tables, right? Uh, now, they don't have a whole lot built in. Basically, they have the 709 lookup table, which is a sort of standard conversion from log. But I also have the ability to actually output in a Rec 2020 mode, which is, you know, interesting. Uh, and the DCI space as well, so if you have that kind of workflow on set, uh, as well as an ACES proxy, which could be in the future very a nice option as well to get you into a, and get you working into an ACES workflow as well. Just so uh, again, these are lookup tables that are built on all the different outputs, so you can output them to various things all at the same time. This is a nice change versus the original if you're using that log LUT kind of workflow. All right, so those are the big changes for me. Uh, Beefier quality overall, bigger, stronger handles, better cables, 12 volt, dynamic range improvements, really big deal there, 15 stops, 4K recording, higher frame rate options, uh, and lookup table support. That's the big stuff that matters to me, uh, but there's tons of other things going on in the camera that have changed. Uh, a really nice evolution, as I said, from the 300. Uh, great news is that if you've used a 300, you can really easily walk into this. The buttons are all basically where you're used to having them. That is a big deal. Uh, really excited to test the camera out some more, see what we can do with it outside, and then see what you guys can do with it. So stay tuned for more on the 300 Mark II. We're going to learn about the workflow as it kind of develops and let you know about that. Uh, and just in general, we'll see what this, ca what this camera can do out in the wild. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.